I have some uh, thought that macam, okay, when I get older, it, things are going to get better. Like, when I get older, people are going to start comparing me to somebody else. Mm. When I get older, I'm going to stop feeling this way. But actually, it doesn't. Nah. Doesn't. Nah. The comparison never stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It's like, oh, oh, house you buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where you buy exactly, the house. Exactly. How many kids you have. Exactly. Where you go to school. Hello, drop for breakfast. Assalamualaikum and welcome to another episode of the Halal Travel Podcast. You're listening to me, Hazira Rauda. So today, as you can see, we are still in the office. <laughs> we were supposed to be somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell from the setup we were supposed uh-huh. to be outdoors. Yes. But hujan. Uh-uh, hujan lebat na moms eh. <laughs> oh, <ketid. laughs> it was raining heavily, cats and dogs. And you know, we decided we just like in the office and... Bring it in. Correct. And like... I think it's not bad. I think it's quite a not bad setup. Cozy. Yeah. yeah, at least now we don't have to hold our mics. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good thing. But anyways, today is book special sangat lah. Tapi macam like it's a, it's a something to remember. So, because this is going to be our last episode for the season. Mm. Our last side talk. This is, um, I think we did quite a number of things this this season. It's like, yeah, we, we tried, tried new stuff. New, tri- try, yeah, tried new concept. We had new people. We have, what else? New stories to share, obviously. So, but today on our tables, we have the famous Mrs. Han. Actually famous only for <laughs> us. <laughs> and we, we really like them. Correct. We had this for our high rise lunch and we really like them. So basically, it's Mrs. Han. They're located in, I think, three different locations. I'm not very sure, but we'll put the locations down below. And then we got the Ayam Gepre. I actually got the Ayam Gepre um, platter. Platter, yes, correct. So, so it comes with this three sambal, right? Correct. So, yang merah. What level you choose? No level lah. Oh, okay. Just, just sambal. And then this is the famous sambal mata. I think I really like this. This is garlic, basically. And then this is the sambal ijo. Yes, she. I got I got indomie uh, gepre. So instead of rice, it's just indomie, mm-hmm. and a side of mata because I find the mata to be like the best. Correct. But only if you really really like garlic, I think. Correct, correct. It's very strong. You know, I actually tried to do some mata. Uh, but it doesn't hit the same. Uh. Uh, I think much like, um, they use something else to much like, um, here is the to really slice thinly the but you can see it's oily right yeah. so it's like it's a good kind of oil yes not a lot of places when you do mata I've tried mata in a few Indonesian places and like different ah. this one is like salty and like mm. ooh, spicy and garlic savoury also and like it's very it. difficult for you to gauge how much oil you need because you know it's going to be really oily mm. so it's a process anyways today on this podcast we have a few questions that I have prepared okay. to ask and to prompt Thought-provoking questions lah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll start with the first one. Hey guys. Before we continue with the episode, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe to us and click the bell button for more updates. If you're watching or listening to this, go ahead to our Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Telegram and follow us for more content. Okay, now you can watch. When was the last time you tried something new? I will go first. Okay, okay, okay. I go first. Because after this, I want to eat all the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, last night, I tried something new, which is... Uh, in Singapore right now, the punya craze is crazy, which is a self, self-clicking self photo booth or photo studio. But it's really good. I am very impressed. Because it has really good lighting. It's a very uh, close environment. Very much... Um, private. Private. So what is it? Is it like... Is it like um, you know, last time you do with the Japanese booths, you take a photo, neoprene. Yes. Is oh it like God. that? Not really, right? Not really, because there isn't like um, some editing. Because usually neoprene, they will come out like very small, can Very small. And then everybody's just crammed into one booth. And then you can do like shapes or whatever onto the prints. But this time, it's more professional, I guess. You could, you could say that. It's more studio setup. So you have props, you have... Uh, Great lighting. Because I know the neoprint is not very great, uh, the lighting. <laughs> and it's very like, fast, right? Very fast, very fast. So I think each session is only 20 minutes. But yesterday, the person gave us like extra 10 minutes. I think we were the only ones there. But it was because my friend uh, was commemorating his last day of army. Last day of NS. national service. So he had the suit on and everything. So we just took pictures. Yeah. So it's quite a milestone for him. So okay, now we do it. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, will I do it again? Probably could, but like with 
with fun people. That's it. I think that's the most important thing. Like you need to make sure that the people that you go with are. Are you saying that the people you went with yesterday was boring? No, we were very tired from work. <laughs> like I would honestly say that we were very tired from work. Or like for, very tired from the day before because my friends are like preschool teachers and like uh, what social media analysts. So their jobs are pretty laborious, you know. So much. by the time by six six forty five we had our shoot is like. Our social energy is down, down. We have like fifty percent left. <laughs> yeah, so uh, probably have it like much like on a Saturday, go and mm, like you have more time. Yeah, mm-hmm. it so, sounds fun to do when you if you don't want to like um, be awkward and have correct. like someone there telling correct. you how to pose. Correct, correct. But I do feel like twenty minutes is slightly long. Oh, it's long to me lah. Maybe because like much like, color you have people who uh much like, Okay, but because I'm a fast person, right? Jay fast. <laughs> like, I don't like to wait around, right? So, I think the photo booth punya timing is still a great uh, option for me. Because like, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But then, 20 minutes is, when you do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, very long time, for a very long time, it gets extremely tiring. Yeah. I think it probably helps when, if you're a big group, probably. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm thinking like, if I do something like that with my family. Yes, yes. Then a lot of people, like more than 10 people, then yeah, that, okay lah. Yeah, that'd be really cute. The kids and things. Yeah, nice. The time. Yeah. So that is my new thing. That is very recent yesterday. A few hours ago, by the way. Then do they provide you prints? <laughs> yes. Hmm. Uh, I think each package comes with... I'm not sure because I wasn't the one who booked, but then come with a few prints. So yesterday, we, I think we were on the premium package because so we have five packs. I think they come by packs or so. So... Uh, I think each person, so each one of us have one print and three collages. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, and one of them even got like a big frame, which is the guy, which is the guy with the suit and everything. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, so it's quite a, I think, berbalo, you heard, with the whole setup and everything. I've seen those around. They look quite fun. But anyway, how about you? Mm, probably like the most recent trip I went and I rented a camper van. Mm-hmm. That's probably like the newer. most newer the most new I think the most out there thing I would do so mm-hmm. no, not really so far <laughs> mm, guess because like my husband and I never really drove overseas right. before like just the two of us um, and he also hasn't driven in a very very long time um, so it was a learning experience having to learn how to like take care of the van uh, maintenance on the van my first time was in... It was my first time in Melbourne also. Mm-hmm. I never went to Melbourne. And my mom would say that I have been there when mm-hmm. I was three months or something. <laughs> or she would say, every time I tell her, we talk about Melbourne, she'd be like, oh no, you've been there when you were like three months or six months. Yeah, I totally remember. Yeah, and then she was like, you felt sick. You felt very, very sick because it was like winter and then they brought me to the hospital. Apparently, it was free. They didn't have to pay. Wow. I don't know lah. And then turns out the doctor said, oh, it's nothing. Or it's a whole thing apparently, so I don't know. Mm-mm. Um, first time there, yeah, I did a couple of things in Melbourne since it's all new. Mm-hmm. Went to the museum, I think it's very. I think you find that on Instagram, right? The, the yeah. picture of the museum is very nice. It's really very nice, cause like the museum is not just that. It, sorry, no, the library. What did I say? Museum, the library. National. National library. I think. Oh yeah. Oh Victoria or something like that. Yeah, the library is very nice, and it's, cause if you see in photos, it's like that dome shape. Yeah, place and then like very historical kind Correct. of place but actually the library is very big and there are many, many arms and many wings and the other parts of it look very modern so like, I see people just hanging out there very nice ah. yeah actually I'm like when I was there I was quite surprised that you know they're okay with tourists being in the same space because I think like when I went it was crazy packed ah, mm. with tourists but the people there were just chilling and some of them were playing chess. Were they, were they quiet, the tourists? You have to be, right? I mean, it's a library. I mean, you, are, you can be quiet, but your footsteps are... Can be quiet, like, you know? So, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, next question. Who do you sometimes compare yourself with? This one, like, needs a bit thinking. You can go first. Then. Okay, I'll go first. So, like, in my family, we have... Actually, I'm the only girl in my family. Uh, in my closest family. And I have a sister, but then she doesn't live with us, so... It's pretty much um, uh, difficult to see her at times. So that's why like, when I say close family, it's like just us. And then I have a cousin who's also a girl. And, you know, I think like Malay community, we have a lot of standards on girls, a lot of expectations on girls. I think. Maybe because like, I'm a girl, so that like, bias. Lah. But then I feel like... Apa? 
Okay, okay but anyways. Um, so like, and we are only one year apart, so we tend to always compare ourselves together. Like, okay, I... Let's say get an A for something. I don't know. Mm. Get an A for something. So she has to get an A for something. Mm. So there's a lot of pressure on her. And for me, it's like, she's always prim and proper. And I'm not. So every time I... Oh, be like her. Be like her. Mm. She's prim and proper. Then I have to be like her. So... But I'm really glad that we are really close. Mm. So like... No matter like what people say, like we just... Among ourselves, we know like that's the shit. Mm. <laughs> that's like not true. You know? So... Yeah. I think it helps to have someone like that. To just like assure you that you are your own person. Yeah. But I think... It's... This is lumrah. Lumrah mm. dunia untuk di compare. Yeah, but it gets to my nerves lah. <laughs> Sometimes it gets very upsetting. Mm-hmm. But then again, it's everything is passing. So everything passes, you know. Your anger passes, your upsetness passes. So at the end of the day, you don't want to have bad blood also. So all is good. Yeah. Mm, I don't... I mean, talk about like siblings same age, I mm-hmm. guess, or cousins. I have a few, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say that we are probably that, that close enough to... Compare. Like you and your cousin. Yeah. So like maybe, I think it may come from like families, or, but it, it's not, it, it's not something that you say out loud. Yeah. I, I feel like I don't really get it yeah. very blatantly, but you know it's still there. So I yeah. think growing up, it's like, oh, you enter uni or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I try not to compare myself to anybody. Yeah. Because true. I feel like, I have said this a few times, like, it's a quote that I like. It's, it's like, thief is the... Eh, comparison is a thief of joy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I feel like if you compare yourself to people and things, um, it's going to take away a lot of uh, joy in your life. Because um, there are many things to be thankful for also, right? Mm-hmm. But I understand how healthy competition is good. Lah. Um, but I think undeniably, you know, among friends, among... Friends of the same age, people you grow up with. Correct. You're gonna like at One some point in time, day. you know, compare yourself to them and say, Oh, okay, where are they at this stage of their life? Or how am I doing? And sort of thing. I guess it's about how it affects you. Yeah, I think it it takes a lot of mental energy to not dwell on it if mm-hmm. it's negative. So I try not to compare and like be on my own journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the things that Rada has always said, which um, has stuck to me, like, whenever I think, like, when I look, whenever I look at my friends, like, oh, this person is married and, like, already, like, on the next chapter of life, while I'm still, like, it seems as though I'm not moving. Mm. In my head, it's like, okay, Rada said, like, she's always said, like, life is not a red race. Which I think <laughs> is, like, so important because, like, instantly, like, clicks me out of this as if everybody has to be on the same track. When you know it's impossible, mm. you know, like, this person might be going through something else. I might be going through something else. It's impossible for us to be on the same level or same life path, yeah. la, which is impossible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you're right. I think I think after a while, as I get older, I tend to stop comparing myself. Yeah, but, but it's not easy. Mm. It's not easy because like, you want to know how you're doing, right? Whether you're doing Correct. well or not doing well. Even like with colleagues or like with schoolmates, yeah. right? Yeah. That's how you have always been brought up. Yeah. Like benchmarking. Exams, yeah. yeah, benchmarking yourself with others through something, right? So like, how do you measure like things like success or whatever? It's like yeah. comparing yourself to others and how others are doing. But I guess it's a matter of how you perceive it yeah. and how you take it in. But I think it's okay to compare, but what's dangerous is that if you, like what you said, like dwell on it, mm-hmm. like you compare and then you just stop everything else. Everything else that was mm-hmm. moving for you, you stop that. And you just focus on the negative. I think that's like super dangerous. What's one thing someone has said to you that has stuck with you? So apart from life is not a red race, <laughs> which is now my new motto. Okay. <laughs> my new um something someone has ever someone ever told me like, not everything's about you. Mm. At one glance, I think that could be negative. Like, hey, much um, no one's talking about you lah. That kind mm. of thing. But at the same time, I think to see it in a more positive light because I think sometimes, I think I'm, obli- I'm oblivious so I tend to be more aware of things. I tend to be more covered. I tend to be more isolated because I feel like people are talking about me. But again, like what this person says is that not everything is about you. So like whatever other people, it might not be directed to you even. So like I think that stops my overthinking and mm-hmm. you know, it's, that stops me from thinking that everything is targeted on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, I think I can relate to that. Because, like, a lot of times, I feel like, tersinggung or like terasa. Mm-hmm. But then, like, it's just in your head. Mm-hmm. 
at night. It's not at all for you. It's just tempias and you trust yeah. her. Okay, next one. Which activities make you lose track of time? Time. Oh. <laughs> Let's say it together. One, two, three. TikTok. <laughs> Social media. Social media yeah. lah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but I have to be proud that much. Um, uh, like a week or two ago, I limited myself to one hour a day on my app. But obviously, there are times where I was like, give me fifteen more minutes or like stop limit for the day. That kind of thing. But I think. Um, the last time I checked, it was 67% down of screen time. Oh, wow. Yeah. A lot. Good. A lot, a lot. Can you imagine how much screen time I actually had before this? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Sometimes mm-hmm. I can go on for like hours. You know, when I don't have anything to do, I can go on for like three mm. hours. The effects are crazy. Lah. I realise that when I wake up and con- start watching TikTok for like two hours, my head actually physically hurts. Oh, for real? For real, like migraine, you know. And it will affect me throughout the day and I feel like I need to hmm. always pitch pitch my this one. <laughs> <laughs> Serious lah. Yeah, but it's really not healthy. And especially like, I don't even go out often. Mm. Work from home, study from home. Nak tengok trees pun tak sempat to like freshen your green eyes. So, yeah. I guess TikTok. But one thing that much like, I really enjoy is to see um, how people design things on, on TikTok. So like there's this one guy who's like, uh, create a website on Figma. Uh, click here, click here, click here, click expand it. Lovely job, please. Something like that. This is one guy lah, but I can go on and on on that, mm. on that thing because like, oh wow, you can do this like super quick. Oh wow, you can do this super quick. Yeah. Okay, that's informative. Informative, yeah. but obviously tempia juga to, <laughs> to like some other things. Some you know? other talks. Correct, so. correct, correct, okay. correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, social media can really suck you in. Yeah. Um, but I think if you have a good book, that can also suck you in. Mm. Yeah, I think if you you are in a good book, you can really you can really spend time and lose track of, of time. I feel like sleeping. Uh. <laughs> sometimes you can oversleep quite easily mm. and lose track of time. Mm-hmm. Anything that menghayalkan, <laughs> uh, <laughs> menghayalkan, easy to lose track of time. Lately, I feel like, um, uh. When I'm doing like maybe work something work related and I'm doing like so, like something mm-hmm. and then I get very fixated on it, I can lose track of time. Mm. Then be like oh, but then I kind of feel good after that yeah. if it's work related. Yeah. Because it's like oh I'm so productive. Yeah. But not if it's mana yang mahal. Correct. 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 Not if you're on like. You but I mean, if you read a good book, I don't think it's something yang mahal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like if I can if I get a good book. Um, I can really get quite obsessed. Mm. Yeah, and then I, it's just like all I want to do. That's good. Yeah. That's good, that's good, that's good. Actually, in my life, I only read like, what, three books? <laughs> or four books from end to end? Really? Even my literature book, I didn't really finish. <laughs> Maybe you should try audiobooks. I always feel like it's not, not, um, not, um, apa tu macam satisfying enough? Mm-hmm. Because it, it's not a, a, a traditional book. What about a book that you cannot sit through? It's just much um when I read right, I always have something else to do afterwards. So like obviously my I think my goal, my next goal is to much um have one day totally free and just sit down and read. Because I do feel that like there are some books that are like interesting, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just that I have things to do afterwards. But how is that different from like you being on TikTok and having something to do afterwards? Okay. Because Claude, I think of TikTok it's like you can cram hundred content in what one hour. But if you read a book it's on one content. You are like, you know, Coco Melon generation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what they say about kids who watch Coco Melon, right? Yeah. It's not good because things are so fast. Yeah. Happening so fast. Yeah. They're consuming so much that they don't really understand. Yeah. True, mm. true, yeah, yeah. I mean, down. this is what this this is what our generation has grown <laughs> up into, you know. We don't want things fast. Okay. Which, uh, sorry, are you holding on to something that you need to let go of? This how I don't have an answer, so you can go first if you have. You're talking about material things. Uh. <laughs> sure. I have a lot of things I need to get rid of. Okay, go. No, I mean... Like your shoes. Yeah, I think I need to go through a cleanse. I need to do what Nuru does in... Marie mm. Kondo my whole life. I feel like... I tend to be very sentimental. Uh, mm-hmm. I hang on to a lot of things from the past. I still have like my... I think I still have my like, school uniform from like primary school. Mm-hmm. I have my CCA uniform. I have... It's long. Mm, why I can keep, I don't know. Oh my god. 
It's not like I can pass it on. It's not like I can fit into it. It's not like... No, but sometimes you look back and be like, oh... This yeah, one, then you keep one. it again. You know, you yeah, look at yeah. oh, cute. Then you keep... It's like, it's taking up unnecessary space. Mm-hmm. Although like, I feel like I have gotten it of a lot of things. I used to have like, shelves of like, books. I give those books away. Mm. I still have some. I have like, trinkets and like, things. I don't know if you remember but when you was younger. You know, I think now still have, but you have those journals with a passcode. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. like, you press the button and you, you say the passcode and it open, right? Yeah. I still have that. You say the passcode? Huh? Do you actually say the passcode? Yeah. So it's like, you, you have to record your voice and you have to say the passcode. And then like... High tech, yeah. Mm, high tech. I think I got it as a gift. It doesn't work now, obviously. Mm. I don't. I think for battery also doesn't work, but mm. I still have that. Because I think I go, probably got write some nonsense things inside mm-hmm. that is quite funny that I yeah. want to look back and see. Right? Oh, things like that, uh, things like... Toys... But I do see like toys from when I was younger now are my like nep- nieces and nephews' toys. Mm. You know, I guess soft toys are evergreen. They're still soft toys. But are they clean? Clean, nah, they, w- they were washed. They were washed okay, many okay, times. Okay, okay. Yeah, they were washed many times. So, yeah, but they're not relevant. Nah. They're not your Paw Patrol or whatever. They're just a side, side They're just like a, a, a bear kick. or like <laughs> yeah. just a soft toy there. But mm. it's it. Brings in, I guess, they still enjoy it, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Yesterday, we, yesterday, my sister in law and I were going through some of her own memory box. And then, uh, like, it was so. I really admire people who write diaries because like, you can look back and see, like, what happened on that day. But I remember, like, my only diary was, like, it lasted two days. Ah. I think I don't have the the commitment to, you know, continue writing every day. I think it takes uh, quite a lot of commitment, so. But what I keep is cards, mm. much I'm like cards to birthday, birthday cards, cards or like, and I really enjoy much I'm, like, I don't something which I'm like scrapbooking, but I, it's without the book. So scraps of like my travels, like my etiquette. So scraps. <laughs> scraps. So scraps <laughs> yeah. And then like, I, last time I used to we climbed the monkey, so we had a tag with a card. And my, my number was Nur Hazira 007, which was James Bond. So I was like, oh, this one, okay, I climbed the mountain and everything. Yeah, so those kind of things are, but I don't think I will ever let them go. Hmm. I don't think I will ever, and I don't think I should ever. Yeah? Yeah. Because this, those times, I thought the internet. So I don't really oh. document it online. So I only have these things to remind me of. All right. Yeah, I don't have anything much to let go, honestly. What's something like which are emotionally? Do we have anything? I guess it's it's if you have any ill feelings <laughs> yeah. towards people. Uh, other than that, also I think things that negative feelings are uh, correct, correct, negativity, correct. negativity. Yeah. So recently, somebody said something to me that like I wouldn't Stop. say I wouldn't say triggered me, but like made me feel quite down. Mm. I think the person said. Um, but we didn't intend it like that or whatever. But it like, um, yeah, stuck with me and it made me think about, uh, oh, am I like good enough or what am I doing is right? Mm. Uh, should I look at like question question myself yeah. la, and question yeah. things, which is a valid thing to do because whatever the guy the person said was had some truth in it. Yeah. But to hear it from someone else, yeah. uh, didn't feel good. I guess. Yeah. So like it was a process of me trying to like. Convince myself that right. oh, it's okay, yeah. you know, that you get over it, that it's something that you need to do something about if yeah. it bothers you, or if not, you know, don't don't dwell on it because even if you do, you won't get anything out yeah. of it. So it was like, like self, what do you call it? Self talk, uh, <laughs> mm. like pep talk to yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's a it's a word for it. But uh, mm. trying to convince myself that it's okay. So those are the negative emotions mm. I'm trying to like. I shouldn't be holding on to, yeah. but. It's still lingering a little yeah. bit um, at the back of my mind that I need to... You know, like, looking at Rauda when she, like, con- like feels this kind of thing, I feel like um, I have this... I Either I used to or I, I have some uh, thought that, like, um, okay, when I get older, it, things are going to get better. Like, when I get older, people are going to stop comparing me to somebody else. Mm. When I get older, I'm going to stop feeling this way. But actually, it doesn't. Uh. Doesn't. Uh. The comparison never stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It's like, oh, well, how's to buy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where you buy <laughs> exactly, the house? Exactly. How many kids you have? Exactly. Where your kids go to school? Then yeah. the cycle just 
perpetuates on, itself yeah. and then it just goes on to your kids, your yeah, kids' kids. Yeah, yeah. And then you as a grandparent, you yeah, as a... Yeah, 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 that's true. So the only change you are, that you are not, I feel like you're not in control of that. Correct. The only thing you are in control of is how you... Uh, Do things. How you perceive and how you take it mm. in and how you feel about it. Yeah. So... And I don't think it's easy also. Yeah. So it's a learning process. Uh. All right. Our last question for today. Oh, okay. When you are 80 years old, what will matter to you the most? Mm-hmm. Oh, no options. I was waiting no for options. options. <laughs> do, you have, do you have something for that question? Uh, when I'm 80, uh, mm-hmm. I think when I'm 80, can, if I even reach 80, can, I think death is the most, the most, most important thing on my mind. You know, like recently I met um, an insurance uh-huh. agent just to like go through, yeah, plan my future and like, things like that. Then like there was one slide that he showed four <laughs> fears in life. Then like he asked to rank what is your four fears in life. Four fears in life. So the first one is wow, this person is so thought provoking as well. Because it's to make you think about your life and think about what's important to you. Mm. So the first is a uh, the first one is um. Not able to work at 60. So maybe, meaning maybe uh, disability or what, right? So you are alive, but you're not able to work. Second one is death. And third one is um, education for your kids. Fourth one is uh, retirement funds. So you're supposed to like rank it. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, according to which one is more important to you. So my first one was, um, what would be your first one? My, I'll go last, last first. Retirement funds. No, I'll go last first and move forward. So my least worry would be, um, okay, if I'm talking to, it depends on who I'm talking to. So if I'm talking to an insurance agent, can, this would be my last, my least. Um, number four. Number four. Because like, what is he going to do about it? So, so the whole um, way of looking at it is like, basically whatever happens to you, right? Yeah. Matters to your family. Mm-hmm. So whoever you're living by, behind, mm-hmm. whatever like money or whatever you're living behind mm-hmm. it's for your family mm-hmm. so death uh, what if you die oh and then not prepared and everything yes okay, so okay. it's like um, yeah and you don't have enough money for your family okay, or whatever. If, that's, if that's the case then I think death is number one okay because I don't know exactly when I'm going to mm-hmm. leave you know and then um, number two would be retirement funds mm-hmm. because I need to survive first before I can support my children mm-hmm. number three would be my Child's education. 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 Number four would be child's education because I think there are some like schemes that will help us get through the mm-hmm. get through the way. And then like number four would be not able to work. Not able to work because I think there's always a way to work. Okay. Like what if you cannot walk then if you have difficulty walking then do online work or like mm. you know because I think we all That's interesting because like that one was my first one. Mm-hmm. Not able to work. Yeah, sixty because like I feel like if I'm not able to work I'm not just able to bring in income, but I'm also a burden to the family. Yeah. So that's double uh, fear, lah, in a way. And then, like, my second one was death. So, like, it made me think about, like, priorities, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, and how important it is to have some level of income coming in, even if something happens to you. So I think probably, going back to your question, just cut the whole part. So going back to your question, uh, I think at 80 though, which is interesting, interestingly he was saying is the kind of average age that we all, inshallah, mm. we live to. Um, probably like retiring, not retiring, but like living the rest of my life with a peace of mind, mm. you know? Mm. Kids are sorted out, they're healthy, they're in a good place, good job. I'm also like not having to worry about money, right? Because at that age, you probably won't have any income coming in. Or you won't be working like at least passive income, I don't know. Um, just getting ready to die, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Be ready for the afterlife. 80 is like pretty... pretty yeah, like you are done. very close already. <laughs> I think you will be spending a lot of your time repenting and yeah. uh, just connecting with your spiritual self. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, but in order to do that, you need to, like, I think everything else needs to be okay. Mm-hmm. Then you can focus on yourself. Correct, correct. Yeah. I think at 80, obviously, like, I think Iman is very important. Because, again, like what she said, like, we're like, almost done, time is up. <laughs> you shouldn't wait until you're 80 to do that. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but then, like, if you were to reach 80, and I think I'll be thinking to myself, like, wow, you have 80 years, and baru sekarang you want to, 
you know really focus on it then it's it will be like a full on wake up call you know because sekarang kita macam masih lalai kan maybe like I don't know mm. I don't think you'll ever reach a point in your life where you say I've done enough yeah. I don't think you'll ever be enough right mm-hmm. but I think sure, in order to have a good uh, to macam make sure that you're on track I think you also need a good support system mm. you know, from your spouse or like um, from your children I think it's so important like family is around and then and I really which I don't know how this relates to the question but I think I really admire I really admire much um, um, some couples who know that at the end of the day they're still Muslims and at the end of the day they're still like servants of God so much um, they help each other in improving themselves as Muslims you know it's not all about the dunya not, not all about just you and I yeah. it's about you know helping you through mm-hmm. your spiritual journey as well it takes a lot of teamwork and um, helping each other out right? it doesn't right. come naturally yeah so hopefully I have that relationship with Inshallah. my family Inshallah Inshallah <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah but yeah um, what else Matter to me the most, yeah. Just want to be happy, yeah. I think at eighty is like it's about time to be happy. It's mm. about time to be content with myself. Mm. I hope like by eighty I wouldn't have comparing problems, mm. you know. And I want to have. I want to be like, if my children feel that way, I want to be able to be the kind of person who's like, it's okay, don't compare yourself with other mm. people. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. I hope you reach that Inshallah. stage. I mean, I also hope. Come shake hand. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys I think this is all For this episode Thank you so much For watching Our past five seasons mm. It's been so long It's been five seasons Five seasons But I was thinking Our seasons are quite short lah. Yeah but A lot of guests That's at least like 50 episodes eh. mm. No No 50 yeah, yeah yeah No 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 Side talk is too- But we didn't have Side talk for every season Correct We'll count later <laughs> At least 50 for 70, sure 70 I think 70 Probably Yeah okay anyways But yeah, thank you so much for watching this episode. We hope you enjoyed. And I think like these thought-provoking questions are also challenging your minds, uh, you know, to just think through. And, you know, it's just just nice to wonder sometimes, you know, like what else can we do with our life? Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, um, go ahead and like, share, subscribe to this episode. Or if you're listening, go ahead and stream it more than once. Share it with whoever you you want. Uh, Thank you once again for Mm -hmm. the amazing season. Uh, Mm -hmm. Continue sharing. But for now, thank you, guys. Bye bye. See you next season. Inshallah. Bye. <laughs> I don't know, do. <laughs> Alright, guys. Thanks for listening. So we'll see you on the next episode. Don't forget to give us a shout out on anchor.fm slash the Halal Travel Podcast. Your voice message could be featured in our next episode. Yep. And if you have any advertising and collaboration opportunities, contact us at info at halaltrip.com. That's I-N-F-O at H-A-L-A-L-T-R-I-P dot com. Also, don't forget to follow us on our Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Halal Trip. We're also now on Telegram and TikTok. Until next time, get inspired, go and inspire others. Oh, 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 o